Hey, welcome to part two for how to make a map in an Imhoff-like manner. So here I am at esriurl.com slash Imhoff. And if I just skip through all the blather that I write about, ooh, look at those color chips. Interesting. Hey, preview images, fun. Anyway, down at the bottom is a link to an ArcGIS Pro style. Alternatively, you can just download the completed ArcGIS Pro project that I'm essentially going to walk through the creation of right here. So let's look at this style, okay? I'll click this. Now a style is like a CSS file for your map. You can apply symbology to your data very quickly, very simply. So here's the style that we were looking at. You get a little preview for what's in it. Now, again, this is for ArcGIS Pro, and I'm going to download this. And I've just saved imhoff.stylex. Now, in ArcGIS Pro, let's set our project up. Um, <clears throat> in the catalog, which if you don't know how to get to the catalog, go to the View tab and choose Catalog View or Catalog Pane. So here I am in the catalog, and there is a, an entry for styles. And if I double click this, I'm into the styles. I've got all the default styles that are, are available to me in an ArcGIS Pro project, including the favorites, which follows me across all projects, which is really nice. Okay, so let's add the style I just downloaded by right-clicking and choosing Add, Add Style. If I hit Refresh, I can see Imhoff right there. I hit OK. Now I've got Imhoff in my project. Well, let's take a look. So I'll double-click this and I have a point symbol. I've got line symbols. We have polygon symbols, which are pretty interesting. But we are going to be looking at these color schemes. So how to symbolize a raster layer. We've got something for mist. Ooh, that sounds intriguing. I'll show you what that's all about. And then a couple hill shades. Let's start building our map, okay? We'll go to the map. And I'm gonna choose an imagery based map. This is pretty important. Imagery is actually a pretty critical component to building up the Imhoff-like technique. So we have an imagery based map and next I'm going to add just one more layer of data. And that's it, that's all it's gonna take. And we, we take it from there. So I'll add data and there's a lovely option here called Living Atlas. I'll explore Living Atlas, it says, hey, Here's a kajillion things in Living Atlas. What do you want? And I'm going to search for a really great service called Topobathy. Topobathy is a digital elevation model of the entire world, including topography and bathymetry. So it goes, you know, from the bottom of the Mariana Trench all the way to the, the tip of the Himalayas and everything in between. And it rescales as I pan and zoom, which is fantastic, incredibly useful. If you don't want to use an image service or the Topobathy service, or if you, maybe you don't want uh, bathymetry in your map, then just use whatever digital elevation model you have. Maybe you want to work with something local. That's cool. I'm using a global serv service from Living Atlas because it's very handy and I have access to it but you can use any digital elevation model. So I'm gonna zoom in to our area of interest, which happens to be the uh, Columbia River Gorge area that um, divides Washington and Oregon. Just a gorgeous place in the world. I love it, it's beautiful. Now, I'm going to open the imagery tab and then kick open this set of raster functions. Raster functions are really wonderful. They're these cool tools that push and pull pixels right in your memory and you can um, just copy them as layers. Uh, you don't have to save all these massive image files. It, it renders it using its system memory, which is wonderful. I'm gonna choose Hill Shade. And as described in the previous blog post, which kind of dissected the technique of um, an Imhoff-like uh, topographic map, I'll choose traditional Hill Shade, which is just a single light source and just hit okay. And it is just spectacular, that's gorgeous. Now I'll add a second hill shade technique, which is multi-directional. Now this simulates light from lots of different angles. And now I've got them both. So 
I can close this, done with the raster functions. Thank you very much, raster functions. And just to review what we're working with here, we've got imagery, the raw digital elevation model, traditional hill shade, which you know what? I'm gonna call traditional. And multi-directional hill shade. Yes. Okay. Uh, now let's start to symbolize these things using our style. So I'll start off with traditional. Uh, I'll turn everything off except for imagery and traditional. I'll open the symbology panel for traditional. I do not want to calculate statistics on an image service. Because I've added the Imhoff style, I now have some really cool color gradients available to me here. And I'm gonna choose the Hillshade Traditional option. Which you can see is shadowy, goes to transparent here so you can see through to the imagery. And then in the uh, what's currently white areas, the sunlit slopes, it'll go into this beautiful golden yellow color. Which looks like that. Isn't that cool? It's all, I mean, that's pretty all by itself. So I'll turn this off now. And we'll do something similar for multi-directional. Now, I'll open the symbology panel for multi-directional, take a look at our color schemes, and I'll choose the multi-directional version of this, which I've prepared for you. And it looks like this. Also very cool. But you know what's really cool is turning them both on at the same time. You get this really wonderful layered effect. Now the last step is to take this digital elevation model input that you've been using all along. Drag it all the way to the top. And now we're going to replicate that sense of atmospheric perspective, that sense of depth, that haziness that happens at lower elevation areas that are further away from you. So I'll open the symbology panel for this one and I'll choose the gradient called mist. And the effect is almost nothing because our elevation image service is dealing with the bottom of the ocean and the top of Mount Everest. So what we want to do is change that rendering from the entire data set to be something called the dynamic range adjustment. So DRA will just take the lowest elevation in my view and the highest elevation in my view and normalize the color scheme from top to bottom based on only what I'm seeing in my current view. Check this out. Now I have that sense of atmospheric perspective and mist in the low-lying areas got bright, bold, crisp areas of higher elevation. I can very clearly see what's low elevation and what's high elevation. I mean, I dare say it looks Imhoff-esque. You know, nothing can ever fully replicate Imhoff, but this is a way of honoring the work of Imhoff and creating beautiful topography in the process. Check this out, I hope you give it a try. Now, what's cool about the fact that this is an image service and we'll just bring in more data as I pan and zoom, I can navigate around and it's happy to re-render and we'll see what I get. Huh, isn't that cool? Didn't have to do anything over again. It's just there. Very Imhoff, very fun. Give it a shot. Thank you very much.